Gabriella Spranzi Noise. Thank you for joining us this Friday afternoon. Welcome everyone to Urbanization, Globalization, and Contemporary Art in China, which is a lecture by Zhang Shehong, followed by a panel discussion with Barbara Pollock, James Elaine, and Li Zhenya. This is a sixth program in a series of lectures titled Light from the Cracks that serves as a complement to the current exhibition on view at Bridge Project which is a composite Leviathan curated by James Elaine, who's here today uh, and will be in the panel. A composite Leviathan features the work of 20 artists based in Beijing and Shanghai. The diverse practices of these artists do not fit neatly into any single category. However, all of their artworks investigate or reflect the rapidly transforming landscape of contemporary culture, including the impact of emergent technologies, globalization and urban sprawl. This parallel programming is curated by art writer Clover Jiswang Zhao. Bios for James and Clover can be found in our chat now, so we'll just drop those in there. Today's program will be presented in two parts, just to give you an orientation. First, a lecture by Joshua, followed by a panel discussion with Barbara Pollack, James Elaine, and Leo Zhenya. Each of these sections will end in a 15-minute question and answer, where you, our audience, can ask questions. Our featured speaker, Joshua Jihong, is a researcher, director, and editor at various art institutions and publications, and overall, his extensive research and curatorial experience in contemporary art and visual culture is extensive. Um, with all of this said, hope that you're sufficiently oriented uh, and can now sit back and enjoy today's lecture urbanization, globalization, and contemporary art in China. Thank you very much, Linnea. Um, um, thank you, uh, everyone, for joining us. And I would like to thank um, um, Bridge Project uh, to organize this event. Um, and I know that uh, we are almost more or less across the globe and uh, we are in different time zones. And I know that in China, probably it's too early. It's around about four o'clock in the morning. Um, but um, I will um, follow the, um, the time sheet that uh, kindly prepared by Xue Song. And uh, we will start. The, this, is, this is a topic that um, I have been um, thinking about for long, I mean, even before I started teaching, um, when I was uh, a student, um, I came to England precisely 22 years ago um, in the autumn. Um, and I grew up in China, in Shanghai. And I always been in Shanghai, I didn't travel much, to be honest. and. And I know that Zheng Hua is here. He's from Beijing. And my Beijing colleagues will, um, um, will say to me, oh, Jie Hong, you, you, you don't look like a Shanghainese. I always took it as a compliment um, because Shanghai um, is, is, uh, usually has a very different opinion in various uh, people in different cities. Um, now we, we are going to think about the urban transformation and uh, its impact on um, artistic practice uh, in China. Um, let, me, let me first of all, let me show you a few slides, uh, which is not uh, a piece of art. I can start my talk with an introduction called Bu Po Bu Li, in English, it's no destruction, no construction. It was a teaching from Chairman Mao uh, during the 50s and 60s. And uh, at that time, we all know how um, 
terrible the Cold Revolution was, and the whole country has been um, um, demolished, more or less upside down, and uh, the the cities are uh, have been uh, industrialized, including uh, the capital city Beijing, as well as a large part of Shanghai. Um, and uh, the the change in China is not something that they add up or they improve. Um, they demolish things and put on the new stuff uh, completely. So you wouldn't be able to tell uh, what was there before. Um, so for example, um, this is uh, uh, one of the pieces in, in a great collection actually collected in Birmingham City Library, uh, which, which uh, was a series of 28 pieces uh, of photographs uh, 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 took in the 1918, sorry, 1860s by uh, Felix Beato, uh, an Italian British um, photographer when he um, uh, came to China with the troop um, and took the very first photographic image of China. And there is another set, which is about Yuan Mingyuan. I think that was kept in BNA Museum, but that one is in Birmingham City Library. And uh, it's beautiful, basically. Um, it's, it's almost look like new, uh, although the color is a bit faded and you can see the details of, um, of, of the picture. Um, and there are, you know, what you can see is the traditional uh, arcs and you can see the uh, residential area behind it. Um, but anything in those 28 images, nothing had left in current China. Absolutely no one thing. There's no one building left in China. And that's what, that's not too long ago. That's 160 years ago, right? It's not too long ago. And it's easily, you can easily find a uh, 160 year old building in England, for example, 200 years old. I mean, my school of art is 175 years old. You can easily uh, spot um, a, a lot of architectures or even a, a complex uh, with a, such a historical significance uh, still um, functioning in, in, um, in everyday life today. But in China, if you are talking about this kind of dynastic buildings, either they are fake, they are uh, rebuilt, or um, the original one, as you can see in Beijing, is the Forbidden City. It's a very small area in comparison with such a, a vast um, a country with uh, nearly one and a half billion population. Um, so same uh, in Canton, um, the new name is Guangzhou and um, the, uh, the photojournalist uh, Xu Peiwu got a series of photographs in the, um, in the um, 2005 to eight and this is uh, an image that you see uh, the, the people are demolishing uh, the old buildings, uh, which is sitting uh, at the forefront of the picture. And you can see the new city, which is called Pearl River New City, uh, rising up uh, in the background. And you can see the comparison and you can see how China um, changes uh, from time to time. And these only take a matter of a decade or even less uh, than 10 years time. So that's the pace and the development that we are talking about in terms of the urban transformation in China. So um, this is where I grew up. Uh, this was a picture uh, I rescued in 2014 and the whole complex has gone in completely. And this is, uh, in anyone, if you know uh, Shanghai, 
uh, there's a traditional building uh, um, which was uh, started in the 1930s, 40s called Shi Ku Men, I mean, literally in English called um, Stone Gate, something like that, uh, Stone Gate style. And you can see the beautiful carving on the, uh, um, uh, on, on the facade of the building. It's basically it's terrace. Uh, inside you've got a little courtyard um, and you've got this little alley. And in Shanghai Nese, we call it Nong Tang. Um, it's like, you know, this is, this is basically, this is my paradise uh, in my childhood. And, you know, it, the complex will leading you to different areas and you've got neighborhood, you've got friends in the next door, you know, um, uh, the, you know, the uh, next door, uh, auntie will be good at dumplings and the other door you walk in to have some bakeries, you know, you know the neighborhood, but all the, the buildings, um, when the building has gone, the neighborhood and the friendship and, and this kind of, um, you know, close relationship and the, this kind of bodily uh, experience has all gone. Um, and similarly, uh, the same in 2014 uh, in Shanghai, that's what I photographed from um, my hotel window, um, a window of the hotel lounge. Um, and you can uh, uh, see um, how um, Shanghai grew uh, in, in the recent decades. Um, and it's, it's quite scary in a way, you know, when you grew up in Shanghai, you know, uh, the, the, the road is always small and you, you kind of, you know the road, you have the control. Um, but nowadays, uh, if I drive in Shanghai, I will easily lose my way. But I've been in Shanghai for so long, I, I spent all my life in Shanghai. Um, but the pace of the change make um, everyone, including myself, who uh, return back to Shanghai very regularly, um, disoriented. Um, when I say very regularly, I would say I travel back to Shanghai at least minimum every year, six, seven times. Um, so it's quite regular in a way. And I just realized that uh, my last trip to Shanghai, I returned back to the UK on the 20th of January. So since then, I never traveled because of the COVID-19. And I just realized that this is the longest time I've ever left Shanghai in my entire life. You know, um, when I was small, always, I always stay in Shanghai. If I'm, uh, when I was in college in Shanghai, I travel in a small distance, I come back in a week or two. You know, even when I'm back in the, uh, when I uh, work in the UK, I travel back every two months, say. So I never um, left that particular city for more than 10 months, but this is the only time in my lifetime. So this is COVID-19 story. Um, I, we can talk about this at another time. Um, but in terms of the uh, urban transformation, and that's the animal that we are looking at. Right, so this, this is a background that we need to set. And then we talk about not only, um, of course, uh, only about Shanghai, but also the whole country and how do we uh, re-visit um, uh, um, um, and re-examine uh, the process of uh, urban transformation. So I'm gonna um, introduce um, some artists' work in the next, um, um, three um, sections. I break them down into um, uh, small titles. Uh, the first one is uh, fragmentality. Um, and obviously you will see that uh, you can't you know, make it accurate. There's always overlap there, but those categorization is not a sort of definition, but it is a way of uh, storytelling, if you like. So the first section is about uh, fragmentality. 
where I feel that through the process of um, uh, urbanization, um, a lot of uh, elements in everyday life has been uh, fragmented, um, including our memories. Um, and I can show you some example and you will see what I mean. Um, so this is um, the first work that I would like to introduce. Um, and I think this artist basically, he did nothing about the work um, artistically, but only take a picture at the same spot one year apart. So the image on the uh, above is uh, John Paley took uh, uh, in year 2000. And after a year at the same location, he took another photograph and you see the image uh, at the bottom. So you can see completely two different images. Um, that's, that's how the city uh, and in this case, how the park can change from time to time. Um, actually, I was, I asked John Petty himself and I was asking him why they need to change in that way. You know, it's, it's costly and it's expensive. Um, what was the reason? Why do we have to change that? Um, I can understand if you plant more trees or uh, you, you put more lawns on top of it. Um, that's something that, that you can understand, but it's, it's completely different scenario. And you will see that this, this is almost like two different places. Um, and he couldn't answer the question. And he felt that this is uh, the everyday experience that you will, you will encounter uh, when you um, have your life in, <clears throat> in, in China. So that's just one example. Now <clears throat> we can move on to, um, if that one, um, it's, um, we will see that uh, the, the photograph itself, it's like a, a slice uh, of, uh, of the flow of every day. Um, and this is only two slices, if you like, but the, because of the, those two slices are completely disconnected. Um, and this becomes uh, a fragmented reality rather than connected reality. And there is another example by um, Song Dong uh, in his very early work. And you can see uh, the, uh, the year, which is 1999. Um, basically, uh, he uh, having a large mirror uh, reflecting um, the street scene. And then he used a hammer, broke the mirror. And when the mirror was broken, um, the, 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 the street scene behind the mirror taking place, succeed, uh, the image becomes um, a new uh, a sort of um, a site for the, uh, for the street. So this is an uh, old piece and perhaps we all have seen that video. Um, but I really like um, the way in which Song Dong did it, um, which is very, very minimal in a way. And it's really less Chinese. This is something I really like. And if you remember uh, the 1980s or the 90s, a lot of Chinese artists um, you can see going through, particularly into those international arena, they're using, we call it um, the Chinese-ness uh, or a particular uh, image, uh, let's say coming from the Cold Revolution or the image of Chairman Mao to attract um, um, their um, international audience. But this is nothing Chinese and, and it's so relaxed in a way. Um, but you can see that there is a sense of humor uh, in the piece as well, uh, which is very confident, uh, which is very confidently uh, produced and performed. Um, 
and I was when I was rethinking really about this idea of um, um, urban transformation um, and contemporary art, I was really hoping that there are there could be earlier work uh, relating to that topic because the Chinese urbanization or urban transformation started in early 80s, but it's quite difficult to find, um, you know, really um, uh, engaging artwork uh, in any earlier days. Um, but obviously that uh, colleagues can remind me later. Um, and, I, and I think it's important uh, to see which one will be identified as one of the earliest piece of um, uh, urban transformation. Um, but I hope that my talk is only um, a starting point for this particular research. And this is a very similar piece by Song Dong. Um, he was projecting um, um, in a street scene on a piece of paper, and then he uh, crumpling the paper as if he's crumbling the city of Shanghai. So the, the city of Shanghai or the image of Shanghai um, disappears into a sort of a darkness or uh, a nothingness, um, completely gone. And then you see another image and the image gone again. Um, but I, I, I'm sorry that I didn't get a, a, a clip that I can show you. Um, so um, only the still image, <coughs> excuse me. This is more reason. Um, this is by Song Dong um, in his recent uh, group show. Actually, I was there. That, that was the installation view that I took from Suzhou Meishu Guan, uh, Suzhou Bo Wu Guan, Suzhou um, Museum. And um, um, you can see that he was collecting these kind of door frames and window frames of the uh, 70s and 80s. And I can still remember um, the uh, pale-ish green color. <coughs> That's a typical color in all kinds of classrooms. Um, and a particular set of downway work unit. Um, and the color actually um, represent um, a particular uh, region or a period of time. And when he uh, manipulated the frame with the color uh, together with um, uh, the, the, uh, the other windows, and you can see that as if he's putting all together the window to organize a new uh, a sort of a neighborhood. Um, and you can see that visually uh, they are so familiar, uh, but actually uh, they are uh, uh, alienated, um, very strange at the same time. Um, but that's, that's um, the, the work uh, uh, is aesthetically sound as well when you see this uh, screen. Um, and you can see that um, he's very uh, confident playing around the color and the frame and to put those kind of fragmented uh, frames or memories all together to organize a new uh, a collective um, being. That's another collective. Uh, that's a, a, a piece of work that I actually commissioned in 2018 by uh, a Shanghai-based artist, Yuan Gong. Actually, he's now based in uh, uh, London. Um, and he collected uh, loads of, um, how do you call this in English? Biscuit tin, biscuit box. Um, and um, as soon as I see it, I see the collection, I can almost smell it because that's my childhood memory, you know, during the, uh, the 70s and 80s, um, people will use this kind of biscuit tin. Um, um, and there, there is a fresh biscuit in the tin. And once the original pack of biscuits are gone, 
uh, dad and mom will fill in new biscuits by using the same team. Um, so the team or the box getting older and older, um, but you are having different biscuits in that team. So that's, that's a treasure box for a lot of children. And, um, uh, and also a box for, for childhood memories. So he's putting those teens together and organized uh, an, a large installation. He called it time difference. So this actually is a, um, a installation with, uh, with um, a particular mechanism that uh, every 15 minutes, uh, this one will uh, make sound. The sound is not made by any uh, computerized, uh, I mean, digital sound. It's actually uh, um, uh, a physical sound. Uh, the, the, the mechanism will squeeze the team and uh, to blow it again. It's like, let the team breathe in a way, and then you can hear the sounds like, uh, uh, um, how do I describe it? It's like a drumming. Uh, sound all the way. So every 15 minutes, um, it will uh, um, ring off and uh, to talk about uh, the, uh, the collective memory during uh, that period of time. And again, this is a new collective uh, when the memories are in fragment, fragments. Hu Jiaming, um, he and his team um, used more energy to make this piece in 2011. Um, and this is a, a, a Google map um, satellite view of the city of Guangzhou. And um, on top of that, you can see all the buildings and all the very single buildings, including uh, those kind of landmark buildings, as well as the small buildings, are all from Shanghai. So he was actually planting every single building of Shanghai's map back into Guangzhou. And those two cities, they've got one thing similar, which is the river. Shanghai, you've got Huangpu River, and this is Pearl River in Guangzhou with uh, the Aisha Island in the middle. And you can, obviously that if you don't know Shanghai, you won't notice uh, that. But even if you go that very closely, uh, a Shanghainese person uh, as myself, you can tell that on the, um, uh, on the le left hand uh, above, you can see a, a, a white circle. That's the stadium in Shanghai, for example. So um, he's, manipulating or imitating uh, the Shanghai map um, into uh, geographically, uh, geographically into uh, a Guangzhou um, satellite view. Um, the last piece of uh, fragmentation, tality I wanted to introduce is the piece by Zhao Zhao, um, which was created in 2015. Um, it's, it's a large piece and you can see it's uh, 90 by two meter and 10. Um, and this is the detail of the piece. Um, it's called fragments. Um, I don't know whether you remember in 2015, there was uh, a big incident uh, explosion inc incident in the city of Tianjin in August. And uh, there are some terrible images uh, that you can find uh, online. And I just searched that incident again this morning and I can find it on BBC and I can find it on uh, Wikipedia and it's reported that 100, 173 people died because of this, that incident. But look at the damage of the incident. The, almost the whole city was blown up. 
Um, and how come there's only 173 people died? Um, it's phenomenal. I mean, China, we all know that COVID-19 only killed less than 5,000 people in China. Unbelievable. We have to trust that. Uh, the statistics must be correct, um, including this one. Um, so um, this one, uh, the artist was one of the very first arrived in Tianjin immediately after the incident. And he picked up one large glass. This is the size of the glass door. He picked up the glass uh, door and back to Beijing to his studio. So um, you can see the fine lines, which are the, how the glass door broke into pieces. It's, it's a very thick, it's like a, one, a 12 mil uh, glass door uh, broke into pieces. And he was remake that every single pieces and polish that every single pieces uh, to imitate the whole glass door in copper. So what you see here is a large sheet of copper and each fragment can be picked up. It's like a jigsaw pieces. They are all separate and they are all very fine. It's a laser cut, very, very fine. It's, um, I can't remember the number. Um, I think it's more than 4,000 pieces altogether. Um, and he and his team um, put those uh, pieces together as uh, uh, a large, um, installation. So that's how um, urban transformation bring to us in terms of fragments and harm into our uh, uh, memory and uh, our perception. Now we can talk about something slightly more um, relaxed in a way uh, in terms of the fluidity of uh, the urban transformation, uh, where you can see this famous piece in 1995 by Lin Yiling. Um, and sadly, I still feel that this is one of his best piece uh, for so many years. Um, he was uh, maneuvering um, this uh, wall across a busy road called Linghe Lu, Linghe Road in Guangzhou. And um, uh, he's building up the, uh, the large bricks one by one from one end to another. So basically you can see this wall roughly three meter by 1.5 meter is moving across a busy road. And it's quite amazing he could achieve that to be very honest, practically. And if someone do that in Guangzhou today, I don't think he will survive within more than 10 minutes. Um, he will be taken uh, to some uh, small office uh, um, and be offered uh, a cup of tea. Uh, this is a, a common understanding uh, now in, in China. When you break the rule, then you will be um, uh, lectured uh, over uh, a cup of tea. So this is uh, how a concrete wall um, can move across the road. Um, and this is another really interesting piece. I bumped into this inflation actually in 2003 when I was in Beijing. And this was actually in a Changzheng uh, gallery, a long, long march space um, where uh, the artist Wang Wei is uh, asking um, a, a dozen or 10 um, uh, migrant workers, uh, workers to build uh, a 10 square meter uh, building inside the gallery um, with no doors. Um, so those bricks are uh, um, recycled uh, bricks that these um, workers get from the market, and they they build it. They they build the uh, uh, the building. Uh, four meters tall, and then they deinstalled the building and turned those bricks back to the market. It's like, again, it's a fluidity of the urban transformation and the material 
is uh, being circulating uh, um, across um, the city. And this artwork is basically doing nothing but add one more stop during this circulation, let those bricks stop at the gallery, inside the gallery to make a piece of artwork. You probably all know this, um, and um, I've been working with Yang Zhenzhong for many, many years, and I've shown um, quite a few of his work, but all new commissions, apart from this work, um, I was inviting him to attend uh, 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 an exhibition that I curated in Liverpool in 2018. That was our old piece. Um, he did in 2002. Um, I did actually find a video for that piece. Basically, it was a girl uh, um, puffing uh, to the other side of the wall. And the other side of the wall is the street scene of Nanjing Road, a busy uh, road, a shopping uh, center uh, on Nanjing Road. And how those each blow push um, the, the, uh, the, the street scene away. Let me see where I can play that. I always like uh, Yang Junjong's um, sense of humor. Um, and I remember that I first seen this work was in Icon Gallery in Birmingham, actually. And that was when I started to know this artist. That was in 2005 or six, I think. And then uh, we worked along and the, our latest adventure was in uh, 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 um, Thailand for the Thailand Biennale uh, I curated in 2018-19. Uh, uh, um, but this piece is again talking about uh, the fluidity of, of the urban uh, scenario and, and the image of the street. Um, and this is um, a, a new generation artist. Uh, we call it Yi Er Dai, a second generation artist. Uh, Hu Wei Yi is uh, 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 the only son of uh, Hu Jieming. Um, and uh, he did this uh, a video installation where you can see the curtain is moving and close and, close and open to see the image of the building is changing. Again, it's about uh, um, the fluid um, of, of the, um, every day and look like a normal residential area, but you look closely that you can see uh, the strangeness um, um, of, of, the, uh, of the image. Um, I'm aware of the time and I know that I've got like seven, eight minutes. Um, so this is my last part or last category, if you like, that I would like to introduce, which is called the elusive. Um, I mean, China, um, the, the urban um, transformation um, will offer you um, uh, an image, nothing but elusive. Um, it's very strange and you can't tell uh, whether this is true or this is false, uh, whether this is real or this is uh, unreal or surreal. Um, this is, this is a straight shot um, by Chou Zhiji in 2007. Um, it's a, it looks like a Tiananmen, of course, but you can see those uh, tourists in front of the building and you can see the proportion wasn't right. And this is, you can see the, the, the subtitle, uh, not subtitle, caption. Um, this is in Linfen in Shan, Shanxi province. Shanxi province. Um, and, and there are a lot of, this kind of um, model chairman uh, around the country. And you can find also find um, San Marco Square in Hangzhou, um, the one that took, I believe, by Zhang Pei Li, and also White House in, uh, in Nanjing, for example. And there are, there are, there are different uh, styles of those buildings. And you can see how those fake building can be used um, as a backdrop of uh, tourists. And 
and this is uh, a lovely piece uh, by Wang Gongxing. Uh, it's not about the neighborhood. Um, and, and this is in uh, uh, Arrow Factory in Beijing. Um, that's a very small um, um, alternative space set up by Wang Wei um, and Pauling Yao. Um, and on the right, um, uh, you can see that this is actually the gallery space. On the left is the real um, bakery. Um, we can't call it bakery, can I? Da Bing Chiemian, how do we call it? Um, it's like my Zao Dian, it's like for selling breakfast, um, selling noodles and dumplings. Um, that's the real shop. And uh, the artist is imitating exactly the same and putting uh, a video piece um, back projecting inside of the house, inside of the gallery um, to mirror uh, the real life scenario. Um, so it's kind of confusing and make uh, the, uh, the little alley a bit uh, uh, surrealistic or elusive in a way. Um, <clears throat> this is another one way's work. Um, very early. 2002, um, he took a lot of photograph inside of this um, empty space, which is a temporary exhibition space. Um, the exhibition is called, um, I think called Fan Ming Zhen and Fan Ming Zhu. Um, and he took those photographs um, and to make this cube. So for the practice alone, it's interesting already it's actually using the photograph to flatten the 3D, uh, the 3D space and to use the wooden frame, the, 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 the cube frame to inflate the flattened image into a new three-dimensional uh, um, environment. And there are performers to support this installation they're carrying this cube, moving around in the actual real uh, uh, physical space. So one is a photographed space, flattened and inflated space. The other is the real space and creating a dialogue between the real and the unreal. And this was uh, Jiang Zhi's earlier work that actually that was uh, commissioned by myself in 2007. Um, um, we all know his famous uh, series of photograph, which is called the rainbow. And you can see this is uh, the image of the rainbow. If you look at the window and the, 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 the rainbow was actually digitalized, organized by uh, uh, hundreds and thousands of um, neon lights, uh, particularly of uh, Western um, products like McDonald's um, and KFCs shining around across the, uh, the Chinese cities. So for that particular exhibition, the, uh, I, I discussed with artists and we think that we may be able to make those photographs into animation. So actually you will see the neon lights are flashing, uh, the, the rainbow is flashing. Um, so what you can see is that um, um, this is uh, a gallery space, but uh, be decorated as a uh, faded sort of 70, 80s interior. Um, and the window um, is a, a back projection um, that you can see uh, out, which is a futuristic uh, image beyond the window. Um, so that makes such a contrast um, to confuse people um, who are the audience within the interior uh, as if this is a, a, a 70, um, 80s scenario, but you are looking at uh, something in the 20th century. Sorry, 21st century. Um, the last artwork I would like to introduce, actually, this is, I was lying. This is not an artwork. This is a real work, a well-known real work. It's a shopping mall. No, it's a sh not shopping mall. It's a, it's a restaurant called uh, Wenhe Yu. Anyone has been? 
Um, I was taken by one of my former PhD students in Changsha, who is now uh, a deputy, well, she's senior member in Hunan Normal University uh, um, Art Institution, Art, uh, Art Institute, I think. And she said to me, uh, she said, she was very enthusiastic. She said, oh, we've got a new restaurant open that um, you must come and see. And they are very good at uh, Xiao Longxia. Um, uh, is that crayfish? Um, um, and it's delicious. I said, no, I don't like it. I, I said, um, I've got a lecture in the afternoon. Let's, let's do that. She said, no, you must go. You must see that. So she and her husband um, being so kind uh, took me to this particular restaurant right in the center called Wen He Yong. And it's a massive uh, shopping mall. And at the beginning that you are entering a very modern sort of shopping mall, but inside you can see this, which is an imitation of the early eighties, a whole street of Changsha. So each banner, uh, each logo, um, uh, street lamps, uh, neon, um, and iron door, uh, lift, everything is a collection uh, from the 80s or an imitation of the 80s to put this all together as a massive piece. So every single detail, I, I can show you on and on and on. I've got hundreds of images of that particular building. And this actually came to me as such a shock. Um, I mean, compare these uh, work with contemporary art and you can see where is the, uh, where does energy lie? You know, th this, is, this is the power of the everyday life in China. And this is, this is um, the, the, um, the owner, uh, the founder of this restaurant, <coughs> They are only 30 years old. They just said to me, you know, I, I, I desperately uh, asked for uh, uh, their uh, WeChat and I called them. I didn't get a chance to meet with them yet, but I called them and said, I, I really like your restaurant uh, and I would like to write about it. Uh, I did have written about it uh, in my journal and, um, and I had a, a, a quick um, interview with them. And they said that, um, they were born in the, um, in the uh, early 80s. I didn't want to lose their childhood memory and therefore they built this. And this actually become um, a, a Wang Hong Dian, um, a Wang Hong uh, internet famous, a very popular uh, restaurant. Um, and you got to book your table, otherwise you will be waiting for hours. Um, so, it's, it's popular. Uh, I can't remember the taste of the food though. Um, I only remember the spice, um, but I can never forget the environment and the smell of the space. Um, and the every single detail of uh, the interior, exterior, and um, you know, there are five floors all together. And the tiles are all coming from the eighties as well. Um, this is really interesting because they said that they wanted to hold their memory. And I was writing say, to say, no, this is, this is not uh, you are, the fact that you are trying to hold your memory. This is kind of anti-memory. You are keep saying to us, this is not a memory. This is yet to be a memory. This is now, right? And imagine that because of um, like the first image that I showed you, uh, which is the Beato uh, taking uh, 1860, we, we can all understand that, you know, the, the, the traditional arcs and, and um, buildings and Confucian temples, they're all gone, that you can't see them again. But these uh, uh, images, people who experience that, they are still alive more or less all of them, right? So this becomes an interesting scenario. For example, if I wanted to create something that uh, uh, really old in the UK, in England, 
you're probably going to create something more than three year, 300 years ago. And therefore, no one who is now alive would have that experience, would be able to compare right or wrong. But this is something that people can compare straight away. Because I lived in that particular house, I know how this uh, particular uh, mecha mechanism of the window works. I know exactly how it works when I was, let's say, um, 10 years old, for instance. And this is something so um, powerful uh, in everyday uh, scenario in the, in the commercial world in China and how those uh, young entrepreneur can have this kind of energy and inspiration to remake the everyday life. And they are being not apologetic. They are being so firm to say, no, this is the now, I do not want to lose it. This is why how urban transformation, the rapid transformation uh, or the revolutionary transformation um, become um, a sort of a stimulus uh, for artistic um, practice as well as for people's imagination.